If you've been thinking about getting into tech in 2025, then you've probably found yourself stuck between these two roles, cloud engineer or data engineer. The question is, which one should you choose? I'm Suleiman. I've worked in tech for a decade. I run my own AI cloud security consultancy. And through my academy, I've helped more than 400 students learn cloud and AI with my first principles blueprints for engineers. In this video, I'll reveal what cloud and data engineers actually do, the skills that you need for both of these careers, and the salaries that you can expect to earn. By the end, you will have everything that you need to help you make your final decision. So what does a cloud engineer actually do? Well, they design, build and maintain the invisible foundation that powers everything that we do online. When you're using Uber, cloud engineers have built all the backend systems that find nearby drivers, calculate prices and process your payment. They make sure it can handle millions of people using the app at the same time without slowing down or crashing. For Netflix, cloud engineers set up the technical environment that store all of those movies and TV shows and ensure that you can stream them instantly no matter where you are in the world. Now, in a typical day, a cloud engineer might write the code that automatically creates servers, fix issues with networking between different systems, or set up security measures to protect user data. Companies like Amazon, Google and Microsoft employ thousands of cloud engineers to run their platforms. And the demand extends far beyond big tech. Banks, healthcare providers, and retailers, virtually every single industry right now depends on cloud infrastructure. Now, when it comes to building your skill set as a cloud engineer, you will want to develop deep expertise in one cloud platform. I personally recommend AWS as they are the industry leader with the most job opportunities worldwide. From there, you'll need to master the core four compute, storage, networking, and security. Now you also need to learn infrastructure's code using tools like Terraform or CloudFormation. And equally important is knowing how to set up and maintain CI CD pipelines using platforms like Jenkins and GitHub Actions. And to be honest, don't overlook your scripting abilities, specifically Python and Bash, which allow you to integrate various cloud services seamlessly. Now career-wise, the opportunities to progress are abundant. You can start as a cloud engineer earning comfort a six-figure salary. As you gain experience, you can advance to roles like Solutions Architect, Cloud Security Engineer, or even SRE. And as you expect, your earnings climb well into the high six figures. That said, there's a shift happening in tech that affects cloud engineers that only few people are talking about. And I'll get to that shortly, but first, let's unpack what data engineers actually do. Now, to me, data engineering is probably the most misunderstood role in tech because people confuse them with data scientists or data analysts. They are not the same same thing at all. Let's use Spotify as an example. Every time you listen to a song, data about your preferences and what you like listening to is collected. Multiply that by over 650 million active users and you can start picturing the astronomical nature of the data. Now, data engineers build reliable methods to capture this data, clean it up because raw data is often inconsistent and then transform it into useful formats and then store it so data scientists and analysts can then use this data effectively to draw business insights. Now, on a typical day, a data engineer might write a code that extracts information from different sources, fix data processing jobs that failed overnight, or design more efficient ways to handle growing volumes of information. Now, to succeed in this role, you'll need strong programming skills, especially in Python and SQL, along with the knowledge of technologies like Spark that handle massive amounts of data, expertise in data storage solutions like Snowflake or Redshift, as well as data pipeline tools like Airflow or Kafka is required to too. Now, in terms of the career path that you can take, it's full of opportunities. You could start as a data engineer or an ETL developer, again, earning comfortably in a six-figure range. And as you gain experience, you can advance to roles like lead data engineer, data architect, or even head of data engineering, with starting salaries of around $125,000 and experienced engineers earning well over $180,000. You can see why data engineering is one of the most in-demand roles for 2025. But there's three shifts happening in 
tech right now that is fundamentally changing what it means to be a cloud or data engineer. Now, when I started in tech, companies kept their data systems completely separate from their application systems. Different teams managed them using different tools and different approaches. Now, data was typically handled on expensive, specialized computers in company-owned data centers. These systems were built just for processing large amounts of data. But today, that division has gone. Most companies now run their data systems in the same cloud environments as their applications. Cloud providers like AWS now offer specific tools for handling data. So the systems for running applications and managing data are now built on the same underlying technologies. And that line between these two jobs is getting blurrier every single year. Tech teams were organized by strict specializations. You had database teams, network teams, server teams, and application teams, each responsible for their own narrow domain. That model is dying by the second. Today's most effective companies are built around the ethos of end-to-end -end ownership. Teams are responsible for entire systems or capabilities and not just isolated components. This approach demands engineers who understand how everything fits together, from infrastructure to data to applications. Companies are actively seeking professionals who can see the big picture, not just specialists in a single and narrow area. The acceleration of AI has transformed how companies view both infrastructure and data. Because cloud engineers now need to design environments that can support the intensive AI workloads with different scaling patterns, storage requirements, and networking, other than just traditional applications that we're used to. Data engineers have to build systems that prepare large AI training data sets and create infrastructure for model serving. The companies that are winning in the AI race aren't separating these functions. They are actually integrating them together. They are building teams with a holistic understanding of both domains cloud and data. So what does all of this mean for you? Cloud engineer or data engineer? Well, to me, the engineers who can bridge the gap between both of these worlds, the ones who understand both the infrastructure and the data that flows through it, they are becoming indispensable. I've seen this firsthand with my consulting clients. Companies don't just want someone who can set up an S3 bucket or write an SQL query. They want someone who can speak both languages. And that's where your competitive advantage is created. But positioning yourself at the intersection doesn't mean trying to master everything at once. You want to start with one domain as your foundation, then strategically expand your knowledge into the other. If you're more drawn into systems and infrastructure, you want to start with cloud engineering and then gradually learn data technologies. If you're more interested in data flows and transformations, start with data engineering and then learn cloud. Because in 2025, virtually every single engineer requires cloud expertise as everything is built on cloud platforms. Now look, the engineers who will make the most money, lead the best projects, and most importantly, remain employed during downturns are the ones who have what I call T-shaped knowledge. Deep in one domain, but deliberately broad across lots of different areas. Think of it like this. The vertical line of the T is your deep expertise. Maybe you're amazing at cloud architecture, or perhaps you've mastered data pipeline optimization. That's your speciality. But here is where most engineers go wrong. They stop there. The horizontal line of the T is just as important. It's about having enough knowledge across Across related areas to see the big picture. For example, if you are a cloud engineer, imagine being able to say, not only can I set up this infrastructure, but I understand how the data team will use it. So let me configure it in a way that will make their queries run 40% faster. Do you see how that's instantly more valuable. Or if you are a data engineer, being able to say that I've noticed we're spending an extra $20,000 a month on cloud resources because our data processing jobs aren't optimized for the infrastructure that we're running on. So start by getting really good in one domain. That's your foundation. Then slowly expand outward, project by project. Take on work that stretches you into the other domain of your interest. Each time that you do this, you're expanding that horizontal line of your team. And trust me on this, in a world where AI is automating virtually everything, this T-shaped approach is like your insurance policy for staying relevant and valuable for years to come. To me, the future belongs to engineers who can see this whole picture. And that's where you need to be. If you're interested in learning everything it takes to become a cloud engineer, then click right here to watch my complete roadmap on how to do this in 2025.